a weather mod miniseries, because there are just too Dagon many for one video. Each mod that you've suggested that meets my basic requirements gets a video showcasing its weathers against the vanilla game. We'll compare aesthetics and performance, compare regions to see differences between hot and cold zones, then finally, we'll conclude with a video comparing mod against mod. Today, we discuss what I look for and avoid in weather mods, and what role e &B plays in my decision making. Welcome to Modding Monday. I'm playing Skyrim. I don't just want a well-made weather mod, I want a weather mod that enhances my experience without changing how the province feels. I don't want weather that is so desaturated that the world becomes a black and white movie, sunrises that trigger PTSD from the oblivion crisis, nighttime that doesn't feel natural across the board, but rather like someone turned down the brightness on my monitor, dimming things that shouldn't be. I won't choose a weather mod that is E and B dependent. I elaborate on this later. Too much bloom. I want to enjoy a game without going blind. Darker nights. It's nice to have a sense of eeriness as long as I can still play the game. Color. Just because it's a cold environment, it doesn't mean each day should feel bleak and depressing. Moments of wonder. If a scene makes me pause from murdering rabbits to take in an inspiring sunset, the mod is doing something right. Storms that feel like storms. Not all weather should be severe, but every now and then, you want a reason to purchase a bed for the night. Sky variation. While still blending in with the rest of what's on screen, I don't want to always recognize cloud or color patterns. Textures. The sun, night sky, moons, aurora, raindrops, snowflakes. These can all be replaced later by mods dedicated to these objects. You can even take specific files from other weather mods and see how they look in your preferred one. Here's an example. To use Rustic Weather's raindrops with Mythical Ages weather. I open my archive extractor. Video here about its installation. File, open file. Navigate to where Rustic Weather's is installed. Select the BSA files. Extract them to a location that I can easily work with. Now I just click through the different folders until I find the file I'm after. There it is. To make this work, I need to keep the same folder structure. In this case, textures, effects, drag and drop the rain file inside. Delete my working folder, right click my textures, pack them into a new archive. Title it so I know what it is. Add it to my mod manager, activate it. Make sure it loads later than the mod I'm overwriting. And when we go in game, here is a comparison. Mythical default rain, mythical with rustic raindrops, and a side by side. Not all mods will have their own sun, rain, or whatever textures. You'll find out if they do when digging through the files. If you really want to go down the modding hole, you can learn how to tweak just about everything that you don't like. This video is not that hole. I don't use weather mods that are dependent on e &B. Here's why. Think of e &B as an application that runs on top of the game. An overlay. A high-tech paint job. What you download from Nexus are presets. Different flicks of the switches and turns of the dials. Of course, additional files can be uploaded alongside those tweaks, including other overlays like Reshade, but at its core, that's what e &B is. Color filters, effect filters. These filters are adjusted exactly the same way as my video editing filters. Raw video footage. Michael's homemade e &B for video. In video, the final edit of these dials, the presets, are called lookup tables. You can download LUTs for video just like you download e &Bs for games. But no matter how fancy a lookup table is, or how professional, you still have to tweak it according to your end footage because the author wasn't working with your camera and lighting as a baseline. Why does that matter to you? A modder's footage is a fully modded game. Your post-processing is e &B. If the e &B author isn't using your favorite mods as their baseline, their preset will look a bit different on your game than it does on their pictures. 
More importantly, using EMB before your game is fully modded might make you miss out on some great texture mods because that vivid purple color palette your EMB has makes them look funny when you first try them out. First mod the game without EMB. Don't sacrifice things that you cannot tweak for things that you can. And let's not forget that EMB has a performance overhead. The more of its effects that are turned on, and the higher the dials are cranked up, the lower your frame rate. I get the world looking how I want it to look, and how I want it to perform, and then play with what FPS I have left at the end of it all, testing different EMB presets, and eventually do some final tweaking of them. The videos that lie ahead are simple and fun. Little to no methodology. Just visual and performance comparisons without opinion to help you decide what weather mods you might want to try. Thanks for spending some time with me. I'll see you soon.